Okay, what did I do on this side? Well, <clears throat> I recapped it all. New electrolytic capacitors, um, most polyester capacitors are replaced, um, clean the Sega board, etc. Completely, oh, and complete transistor replacement. Mainly replace the transistors with C1845 series and C1850 series NPM transistors. And that includes the Dolby circuit as well. New motor run capacitor. <coughs> right, the power supply has been recapped, and you might notice here there's a bias trap there. Now, by default, you can't alter the bias trap, but I've uh, added a feature into it where I can uh, trim the amount of rejection of the bias signal getting into the audio. So there are my trimmers there, and they work rather well. What else have I done? Um, yeah, the original capacitor bank. Uh, the, the, the original design was to um, solder. There's, I don't know if you can see here, but there's like um, bridges of solder that you can you can make. To, to make up the required capacitance for the bias circuit. So what I've done, I've taken the, the old capacitor bank out and replaced my own uh, 100 volt rating trimmer capacitor for left channel and right channel in series with something like a kilovolt rated um, ceramic capacitor in series for both left and right channels and I can alter the bias carrier voltage um, from about 15 to 25 volts and possibly even higher range than that actually and again that works well <clears throat> had an issue with the motor and the flywheel the belt in particular it had a tendency to ride up so to negate that I had to figure out what to do and I thought the best idea was to loosen the motor and move the motor around on its axis to find a sweet spot where the, the two axes, the axes of the motor pulley and the flywheel complement one another so that I can get the, the uh, flat belt to run on the, on the two centres. And to do that I've had to put a little piece of card in, in one side and then obviously put the motor back in. And then yeah, it's working fine. On the right hand side, if I can move the camera around, you might be able to see Excuse the movement. I'll just refocus. It's all been recapped. I tend to mark my uh, work in red or green. Look here in particular, these are record playback multi-switches. Whenever you get a new cassette deck, you must clean these. You must apply Cervisol Super 10 or some equivalent to it to clean these. Otherwise, you're going to run into a lot of problems. And uh, that's one of the reasons why a lot of people sell their cassette decks, because they see the VU meters flashing over for no reason at all. And what's happening there's a level of shorting going on here short circuiting i'm not sure exactly what it is but applying super, um service old super 10 cures the problem there and then job done um apart from that what else have i done not a great deal cleaned obviously all the mechanisms i'll probably think of something later anyway i'd like to say in here now that the uh, machine's working very well yeah i think that's it <clears throat> did i mention i replaced all the transistors in the dolby sex I, I can't remember perhaps i did anyway if you've got a, a 134 sd do not do what i've done now i know that i can afford to take this off here and run the system um because it's uh, electrically isolated so there's no problem there for me Okay, let's go back, move it down slightly.
Yes, I'm very pleased with the results. It's taken me on and off about a year to get this far, with other things being in the way, of course. Um, let me show you this. Can you see it on the video there? Um, when I put that circuit back, as I will in a moment, I've put uh, marked in all the calibration um, points there, so I can um, easily find, you know, view meter, meter calibration, record level calibration, playback, and playback EQ calibration points. It saves me uh, checking the service manual every time. Anyway, there we are. Hope you found it interesting.